What's up, y'all? I'm out here at the range this morning. As you can see behind me, it's a cloudy, dreary, windy day out here. Done got chilly again. I think it's down in the low 50s. It went from 70 to 50 the very next day. So crazy time of year for the weather. Left my dog on fuzzy hat at the house, so my head's going to be cold out here, but we're going to power through it. Got a couple of new tools I'm planning on running out here for today. And as you can see by the title in the thumbnail, the first one is another Henry. What we got here this time is another Henry lever action rifle, and this time it's chambered in 45 70. This thing is absolutely beautiful, y'all. Walnut stock as usual. Got some absolutely beautiful engraving and checkering on it. Check that out, y'all. Back there on the grip area and then up here on the front, it's beautifully engraved. Got Henry engraved on it. It does have a brass receiver. This one, again, just like my 44 Magnum, is a 20-inch barrel on it. I really like these 20-inch barrels. Gets all you can out of these Henrys. Um, again, chambered in 4570, so it's got a four-round capacity. You can see the big old loading gate there, and this one is actually another side loading gate as well. I really like these side loading gates. I think that's the only way I would buy one, to be honest with you. That side loading gate for me is a must-have. Um, the 20-inch barrel is pretty much a must have for me and also y'all know i'm a fan of the big loop levers and this one had the standard loop lever but i've already changed this one out to a big loop lever as well so really beautiful rifle here this thing is absolutely gorgeous got a brass butt plate on the back of the stock as for the sights you got a ramp on the front with an ivory bead on it and then on the rear you got your semi buck horn fully adjustable as usual but like i said y'all this thing is just absolutely beautiful i could not resist when i saw this between the engraving uh the brass receiver on it i mean I mean, this, this thing is just absolutely gorgeous. I think this is a beautiful rifle. What we're going to do with it out here today, as usual, when we get a new tool, I'm going to uh, try to sight it in a little bit out here at 25. Then we're going to ring some steel out at the 50 to 75 and the 100s. Uh, and then we'll probably pop some bottles and maybe try a couple of boom booms. And we got a big old watermelon to take care of with this big monster too. Now for the ammo, I got a couple different kinds here. I got some Remington Core Lock. This is 405 grains with a 1330 feet per second muzzle velocity on it. So big old old chunk of lead right there 405 grain soft point core locked and then i got some barnes vortex these are the solid copper expanding hollow points now these are 300 grains and the muzzle velocity on these is saying 1925 feet per second so this is a smoking hot round right here but like i said i absolutely love the looks of this thing one look at it and i couldn't resist i instantly had to have this thing um i don't know how well the details come in with this wide angle lens but it is absolutely gorgeous but anyway let me get some paper set up down there at 20 and we'll get started out here all right y'all let's see what this beautiful girl can do down there i got us some paper set down there at 25 yards i've got four of the barnes vortex the 300 grainers loaded up so we'll see what kind of grouping i can get um i'm y'all know how i do i'm just gonna try to get it roughly where i want it to be at and then probably off camera i'll work with a little more and then we'll come out on another video and try to get some tight groups with it because um i'm gonna be honest with you i definitely am not putting a scope on this thing there's no way i'm ruining the look of this thing with a scope so I'm going to get as good as I can with the irons on it. So like I say, four rounds of Barnes Vortex. Let's see what we can do it up at 25, y'all. All right, let me check that before I run another one. I don't know if that was luck or what, but that's right dead in the center, buddy, for sure. Let me tell you what, this thing's got a little thump with nothing but this brass butt pad on it. But let's see what we get. Let's try another few down there. I think I went a little low on that one. All right. I think that's pretty decent down there. Let me check out and see what I got. All right, y'all, I'm gonna leave it right there as far as that paper, because I'm gonna be honest with you straight up. This is a beautiful rifle, but let me tell you something. That thing kicked the crap out of my shoulder. My shoulder is killing me right now. I'm just gonna be honest with you. After four rounds, that, and uh, I, I run just about everything out here. That thing kicked the crap out of me. That is painful. Um, it's probably a, a part of it's just, just brass butt plate, and part of it's me shooting from here on the bench uh, i really should have brought my limb saver to be honest with you so i'm gonna i'm gonna put some more out here but this might be the shortest video ever um and then i'll bring my limb saver next time and we'll do some more grouping it in tighter but for right now i'm gonna put a couple on the 50 and a couple on the 75 i'm gonna swap over to these remington core locks these 405 grainers i'm not sure which ones are gonna be worse these are them barns i just ran these are uh, about a third heavier uh but they're about 600 feet per second slower so i don't know but let's try to the side gate and make sure it go it works good to go got one 
two, three. Very smooth on that side gate. I really like these side gates. And four. All right, so like I say, uh, I'm gonna do two on the 50 out there and then two on the 75. So y'all pray for my shoulder. All right, looked like that was a little bit low. All right, so what I can tell you is these are way softer than those barns. These are way, way softer than those barns for sure. So looks like I'm hitting a little bit to the right. Yeah, I'm definitely a little to the right, but let's put a couple out there on the 75. I'll try to move it. I'll try to hold a little bit left, make sure I'm on. I mean, that stuff smacked the heck out of that steel down there, y'all. All right, I think I hit that right at the bottom, so I'm gonna try to hold it up a little bit and to the right, to the left again. All right. So we got all those, got both of them at 50, got both of them at 75. That was actually right in the center. I held high and left, so I need some adjustments on these uh, on these iron sights, but I'm probably not gonna mess with it today, like I say. I'm gonna try out at the 100, and if I can put them out there uh, consistently, I'm gonna leave it like it is for now, but let me get set up down there. All right, y'all, got the camera set up down there at 100. Uh, I'm gonna go back to these barns vortex for this 100 one. I'm gonna see what these feel like this time. Uh, that one, I'll be honest with you, that one was actually pleasant to run those uh, Remington core locks. That, that wasn't bad at all. Um, I don't know if I, I had a little bit of different hold so that may may have made the difference or it may be the ammo so i'm gonna try four more of these barns vortex and see what they can do all i know is uh these first four of these barns kicked my butt buddy like i say those remington core locks were actually pretty pleasant not bad at all so i'm gonna, I'm gonna try the same hold i had with those core locks and see what i can do with these barns well let's see what we get down there to 100 y'all all right so that was not bad at all. So I think I had some kind of goofy hold. I don't know if it was because I was steadying. Um, I don't know if it was because I was steadying the uh, stock with my hand back there like I was doing or not. But that right there wasn't bad at all. So I'm, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep holding like this with the four end for sure. So uh, I was a little bit low on that one, but I'll take that at 100 with iron sights. Here we go. All right. That pretty much hit about the same spot as I hit that first one at 100. I mean, it's rocking that steel down there. So I'm gonna keep holding where I'm holding. So I can tell it's definitely shooting uh, low and right. So I need a little bit of adjustments on here. But like I say, now it's it's uh, it's actually pleasant to run this thing now. That first group was not at all, but this these ain't been bad at all. So let's put a couple more out there, y'all. All right, is that the same spot? Pretty much the same, moved it up a little bit, but basically the same spot. Let me put one last one out there at 100. Was that it? Was that four? Dang, I was having so much fun out there, I lost track of how many was in there, or did I only load three? I'm pretty sure I loaded four, didn't I? I don't know, let me reload it, let's do some more. All right, y'all, I could have swore I loaded four in, but apparently not. I found the fourth one laying on the ground down here. I don't know what I did, but uh, I'm gonna run three more down there at 100. I'm gonna run three of their uh, Remington core locks, and we'll see where they're hitting at. I imagine they're gonna be close to the same place, but being a heavier round and slower, they may not be. They may be dropping a little bit more out there at 100, so I'm gonna make sure I hold high enough for sure so let's see what we can do at 100 with the core locks y'all i mean that is some power going down range i mean that thing is swinging down there buddy that's the hardest i've ever seen that steel swinging out there at 100 all right i see one shot down there at the very bottom i'm gonna try to hold it a little bit higher with these last couple let's see what we can get All right, I think that moved it up some. I see a mark way at the top, but I think that's where it knocked the paint off. I won't know until I do the editing, but let's put this last core lock down there at 100, y'all. Ah, I missed the last doggone one down there. That's all right. Let me load it up and I'll put some new targets down here. All right, y'all. I can't believe I missed that last one out of 100, but I guess that ain't too bad. Iron sight straight out the box, five out of six. Uh, I'll take that with no adjustments at all. But I'll come out here, like I say, another day and we'll do some more tighter grouping and I'll see just how good I can get it down there uh, just with these iron sights. So for now, 
I'm gonna load up three more rounds of these Barnes Vortex and I got a couple two liter bottles and I got a big old fat watermelon right there that needs some taken care of. So let's try these. We've got three more to Barnes Vortex. Um, like I said, it's actually been pleasant uh, since that first group shooting this thing. I don't know what I did on that first group. It may have been the way I wasn't supporting the four end right like that, just trying to do some kind of precision shooting. I don't know what the case was, but it's a whole different animal now for sure. So let's get those two bottles and then we'll get to watermelon. All right, let's get that watermelon, y'all. That was a pretty good one there. All right, y'all, we're calling it right there today for the 4570. Uh, ran a total of 17. It was either 17 or 18 rounds out of it out here, and it ran absolutely perfect, of course. It's a Henry. I expect absolutely no less. And like I said again, this thing is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, if if you don't think this is a pretty good-looking rifle, then I don't know what's wrong with you. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. As far as the shooting experience, like I say, that first group out there on the paper was a little rough. Uh, I don't know if it was because of the downward angle i was aiming or just the way i was holding the stock back there or what the deal was but that was a painful first four shot group uh the ones after that not so bad now don't get me wrong it still thumped you and it let you know what you had in front of you but it wasn't near as bad as that first group but like i said i'm gonna probably work with a little bit off the of camera and tweak these sights in a little bit and then i'll do another video and we'll stretch it on out there and see what kind of groups we can get with just the iron sights because again i'm not putting no optic on this i think it would be an absolute crime to put an optic on something like this this thing is just too beautiful to be putting an optic on top of it but y'all let me know what y'all think about the 4570 henry do y'all have something in 4570 do you enjoy shooting it is it a thumper like it was out here today let me know y'all's thoughts down in the comments if you did enjoy the video as always make sure you reach down and hit that thumbs up make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you can get notified when i upload these new videos check out all my affiliate links down in the description below if you shop through amazon hit that link up first down there it goes straight through amazon like normal from there and anything you buy anywhere on the site i get a kickback from towards the channel so i really do appreciate that again if you're looking for some good ear pro check out those axle affiliate links down below these things were a champ out here today even with the 4570 i've absolutely loved these things since i've been using them so if you need some good ear pro check them links out there's some pretty big savings down there versus going straight to their site appreciate all my range game members who reached out and hit that join button appreciate every single person who supports the channel by watching the videos by hitting that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel and leave me some comments down below again let me know what you think about the old 4570 henry kind of nasty weather out here but there's one or two more things i want to try to knock out before i get out of here so y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for that and in the meantime stay safe stay prepared and i'll see you soon